morning, everyone, here locally and online around the world. <laughs> uh, glad you could join us at Grace United Church today for our Sunday worship. This is October the 18th. I lose track of the date because I'm retired, <laughs> so I have to be reminded now and then. But welcome on a gorgeous day, a uh, good day to go out for a walk and uh, have a stroll to church. So we're glad that you're here today. This is our first, or sorry, our third Facebook Live. And uh, for those of you who are watching, if there are any technical difficulties, again, uh, we remind you that uh, the service is posted fairly shortly after the live ser service on Facebook, and then a couple or three hours later on YouTube. Uh, Paul does an upload with a little bit more information on it. So again, I, I welcome you today. I wanted to make uh, one special announcement. I was privileged yesterday as your Eastern Ontario Udaway Regional Council representative to attend a two-day uh, session of the entire um, region. We had over 125 people on Zoom, so that was quite the challenge. I've never been on a meeting that big. In general, it went actually pretty good. We had breakout rooms to discuss stuff. But the big announcement was that yesterday afternoon, our own Reverend Takui was inaugurated as the president of the EOORC. So congratulations, Takui. And uh, without further ado, it's my privilege again to uh, introduce Barbara Jeet from uh, Christ Church in Lynn, and she will lead us through worship today. Thank you, David. Well, this is my last Sunday with you. Thank you for the privilege of coming and bringing God's word to you for the past three Sundays. I'm going to have some assisting today. Kathy Ferg uh, sorry, Tammy Ferguson is going to do some prayers and read the scripture. The light of all lights is with us always. We'll now do the call to worship. People of God, attune your senses to what is around you and discover the glory of God. We notice God everywhere we turn, in the sky, in the world around us, and in the people we meet. People of God, praise God for goodness towards all things and all people. Every day we are aware of the renewed cycle that only takes a spark.
us pray. This prayer is based on the Psalm 96, 1 to 9. Sing a new song all over the earth. Announce to the world God's holy name. Marvel at the glory of God's creation in all its majesty, beauty, and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, O followers of Jesus. Ascribe to the Lord your joyous praise. Bring what you have and enter God's kingdom. Trust in the Lord. God knows you by name. Amen. Thank you, Tammy. Isn't that wonderful that God knows us by our name? I have a story to read, and it's called The Invisible String. It's a story that is to remind us and children that we are never alone. Liza and Jeremy, they were twins, and they were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly, it began to rain very hard, and the thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them. Mummy, mummy, they cried as they ran to her. Don't worry, you two, she said. It's just the storm making all that noise. Now go back to bed. But, but, but we want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. And the mom said, you know you're always together. No matter, we're always together, no matter what. But how can we be together when we're out there in the other room sleeping and you're in here? Mom held up something in front of them. This is how, she said. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what mom was holding. When I was your age, the mother said, my mother told me this story about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. No, you don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other always connect by a special string made of love. But if, if you can't see it, how do you know that it's there, asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to someone who loves you. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I find it, feel it, tug at my heart. And then when you tug back, do I feel it in, our, in my heart? Said Jeremy. Yes, said mother. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string? Liza asked. Oh, she sure does. And my best friend, like Lucy, does she have an invisible string? Best friends do too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mom said. Would it reach me even if I was in a submarine underneath the ocean? Yes, even there. What about a mountain climber? Yes, even there. A ballerina in France? Yes, said Mother. And a jungle explorer? Even there. How about an astronaut way out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Ben in heaven? Yes, even there, said mother. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, mom said. Love is stronger than anger. And as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and can't agree about things like which movie to see, or who gets to ride in the front seat, or what time to go to bed. Oh, that's right, said Mom. You two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed and Mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few moments, 
They were fast asleep, even though the storm was still making all kinds of noise outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have, and all the strings that their friends have, and their friends have, and their friends have, until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they now could clearly see no one is ever alone. Amen. We can't pass the plate for our offerings because of the situation we're in. So we're going to read this offering prayer together and ask God for blessing on the offerings that have been placed in the plates. Let us read together. For the blessing of this and all your, our days, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just this offering of money, but also our lives freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Bless and use all that we offer in this place and wherever you might take us. Amen. We'll have a minute for mission. Good morning again. Dave Charles is back as your uh, mission and service enthusiast. And um, one thing that you may have seen over the last uh, few months within the United Church Communications is that the um, United Church believes that food, shelter, and a minimum income are not uh, just something that folks hope to attain but should be a right. And to that end, today uh, and last, starting with last Thanksgiving, uh, last week, uh, it's known as World Food Day within the United Church. The other thing I was going to mention to you before I read this is that uh, I got a very good update yesterday from the uh, philanthropy and stewardship area of the United Church at our meeting yesterday. And they mentioned that this year, minutes for mission are going to be try to be a little more relevant. And what they found was the booklet that you see here that I often read from is printed almost a year ahead of time. So a lot of the topics are kind of out of date by the time we get to it. They didn't have COVID, etc. So what is going on, especially in our online world, is folks like myself and the church secretary and the minister will regularly get updates and minutes for mission as they occur and are created uh, so that they can be shared. Uh, there will be also a fair number more videos, as you said you enjoyed uh, over the summer that I was able to share with you. So I thought that was a good idea, that we need to make it more relevant, more current. And again, with email and websites, et cetera, it doesn't really take that hard to get a PDF to uh, the people in the church and also to distribute it to folks who can't attend. So let me tell you a little bit about World Food Day. The United Church of Canada believes access to food is a basic right. Those who work to provide food, farmers, fishermen, gatherers, and hunters, as well as those who transport, distribute, and prepare food, should enjoy safe and dignity working conditions and earn an adequate livelihood. The experience of the pandemic has shown us the stark, in stark relief that this is not the case for many people around the world and indeed, in many places in North America. The fact is vulnerable people become even more vulnerable in the midst of crisis. A large part of the world lives with the reality of not having enough food for their families. The United Church of Canada supports local, national, and global partners as together we work to help bridge the gap between having enough to eat and being hungry. The United Church supports local efforts like we do with the food bank, meals for vulnerable community members, community gardens, and food sharing programs. Gifts with vision projects like food for the North that help people access food they need in different ways. Global initiatives like United Church collaborations with global partners to improve farmers' capacity to grow their own food and provide food assistance when a hand up is needed.
and you folks may remember we had a, a gathering of that uh, just about a year or so ago to support that. So again, thanks for your continued givings to Mission and Service. I'm looking forward to an exciting time ahead next year. Take care. Thank you, David. Just before a scripture, I'm going to read this prayer. Let us pray. As we come to hear scripture today, let us open ourselves that we might experience the intention of the divine creator they have called us to fulfill and act upon. Bless, bless, my, word, bless my words that they may be true and faithful, and bless the hearts and minds that hear them. Tammy? So the scripture comes today from Exodus um, chapter 33, verses 12 to 23, and I'm reading in the newly revised Standard Version Holy Bible. And there's many Bibles out there, and it's very interesting to see the various ways that uh, the Holy Word is presented. Um, might I mention that I'm also a student with the Licensed Lay Worship Leadership Course with the United Church. I'm in, in the middle of my third course, and uh, we're work, working on what is worship. So it's a really fascinating course, and I'm very much enjoying it. And if there's anyone out there that wants to talk with me, I'd be delighted to, to talk with you. This is about Moses' intercession, and he is talking with God. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know who we will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now that I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too, this nation is your people. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from your people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight. I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and you will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen. Here ends the lesson for today. Thank you, Tammy. I'm reading from the Bible called The Mess, and to ask, Teacher, we know you have integrity. Teach the way of God accurately are indifferent to popular opinion and don't pander to your students. So tell us honestly, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus knew that they were up to no good and he said, why are you playing these games with me? Why are you trying to trap me? Do you have a coin? 
Let me see it. And they handed him a silver piece. This engraving on this coin, who does it look like? And whose name is on it? And they said, Caesar. Then give Caesar what is his and give God what is his. The Pharisees were speechless and they went off shaking their heads. We're going to have ministry of music and it's just as I am, I come. Was beautiful. I've entitled my reflection this morning, Trust. That's a big word. Not many letters, but it means a lot. Please pray with me. With hearts and minds wide open, O oh God, we come to thee.
to receive the gift of your presence with us here today. Amen. When electricity became available in the remote rural areas, one woman went to great trouble and expense to have electricity installed in her home. A few months after the wiring was installed and the power was turned on, the power company noticed that the home didn't use much of the electricity or the power that was there. And fearing there was a problem, they sent someone to investigate. The meter reader saw that the power was indeed working properly and then asked the woman, do you use your electricity? And she replied, oh yeah, of course we do. We turn it on every night to light our lamps and then we turn it off. Sounds a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? Having all the power that you need and the ability to tap into it at any time you want, but you're only using just enough to get by. We wouldn't do anything like that because that wouldn't make any sense. However, we do exactly the same thing a great deal when we apply the same reasoning to the power and the presence of God. We go out of our way to come to church and worship. Do we come because we have to? Do we come because, well, it would look good? Or do we come because we want to feel the presence of God? Some people come to worship but have very little of a relationship with God through the rest of the week. We go through difficulties day after day and only when we come to the end of our own strength do we say, please help me God. We have all the power of God at our disposal all the time but yet we attempt to get by on our own strength. We're a lot like that woman with the electricity in her house, aren't we? We need to experience the presence of God to experience his power. Just like electricity, when we remove the presence of God from our lives, we remove the power. God created all of humanity to have a deep personal relationship with him. Think about this. God literally walked and talked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Think about that for a second. He walked and he talked with them. They were able to completely enjoy the divine presence in that garden. God's desire for your life is to have the same kind of relationship with him. He wants you to be able to walk in his presence. It's not scary, you know. It really isn't. Some people think, oh dear, you know, God walking with me, wow. But it's very peaceful because he loves you. In Exodus, it was read that God, sorry, Moses speaks with God and simply reminds God of his promises. In the vernacular, Moses and God were BFFs. God was Moses' best friend. And he could talk to God about anything. But yet he said to God, don't forget the promises you made to your people. God wouldn't have forgotten it. But you see, Moses had some genuine concern because in the camp of the Israelites, the presence of God was not felt anymore. And God had promised to be with the Israelites in their camp. But the Israelites, they didn't want to have anything to do with God. So you know, God will not go where he's not wanted. So he was not 
in the presence. How often do we feel the same way about church, but we're afraid to say it? How many come into this sanctuary or wherever you worship week after week after week and have no experience with God? You don't feel him here. That's too bad. But what is the problem? The problem is we're not seeking more of God. We settle for the status quo and leave our lives right there. I go to church, I sing, I give my money, I go home, that's it. That's not it. If we settle with what we have already experienced with God, we cannot grow as Christians. When we settle for where we are with God, we'll never move forward and walk with him. The truth is that we cannot simply settle anymore. When Moses sought God, he did so through fervent prayer. Prayer is our electricity to God. If you cut off that line to God, it's a very lonesome walk. Moses sought God through fervent prayer. He sought God by going to his knees, seer, in wanting to serve God, in wanting to be in his presence. Moses wanted three things from God if his life was to be pleasing for God. And I feel that we should have, there was a list of more than three, but I chose these three. And I think these three we should want in our lives too. We should want God to teach us his ways. How do we follow you, God? It's found in the Bible. I want to know you. Not just to say, oh yeah, I know God is there. No, personally, intimately know God. A direct connection between the ways of God and knowing God. We can't do this without knowing his word. He called us his people. And I want to, we should want to live in God's favor. Knowing him personally, his favor will rest on us. His favor is something he gives us because we're in an intimate relationship with him. He shows us how to show love, how to be an example to other people. It's impossible to know the favor of God if you don't know God. We do all these things and it opens up our lives to the presence of God. You know, sometimes, like that piece that was sung this morning, I could feel the presence of God in this sanctuary. I hope you could feel it too. It's in the words. It's in the sound of the music. We're all touched by music. Music is the universal language. And some of the songs, like when someone sings, How Great Thou Art, or the bagpipes play Amazing Grace, the feeling that comes over you is the presence of God. When we live to know God's ways, we get to know him better. And then he opens up the floodgates of heaven and he pours all his divine favor into our lives. Now, it doesn't have to be a big house or a big car or anything like that. It's being able to love one another, to help one another, 
to be kind to one another, to be there for your friends when they call. God helps us to do that. The relationship Moses had with God was really, really deep. Moses asked God, who's going to be with me? You want me to lead these people. Well, who's going to be with me? And God said to him, I will be with you. My own presence shall go with you. Not an angel or something else. I, God, will go with you. And this... He knew that this opportunity he had was a rare one, and he wanted to keep it. God spoke to him in the burning bush, remember? Speaking with God is a rare opportunity that not very many people get. He was in the presence of God and talking to him, and he didn't waste any time, he meaning Moses, He asked God, who's going to be with me? You promised me someone. I, your God, will be with you. When we also understand that we will know that the presence of God is glorious and amazing. But unfortunately, we get distracted and sidelined. And our priorities tend to change as time goes by. I'm sure this COVID-19 has really thrown a wrench into a lot of faithful people. People who wish they could come to church and sit like you do this morning and sing the hymns or read the words. Yes, they're doing it at home, but it's not the same as gathering with your church family. I guess this COVID-19 is trying to sidetrack us, but it isn't because you are here this morning. There are churches that are doing services on YouTube and Facebook and still talking to the people of God. We need not change our priorities towards God. That's not how a true friend of God acts, distracted. Yeah, I hear you, God, but look at my desk. It's full of papers. I'll get to you later. Are we really excited to be in God's presence and enjoy him? Or are we more interested in finding happiness in what he can give us? Moses is a true friend of God, and that should be our desire as well. When we're close to God and feel his presence, we will understand what Jesus meant when he told the Pharisees, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and unto God that which is God's. So what things are God's? It's a simple answer, everything. Everything we are, everything we have is God's. It belongs to God. All that we claim as our own actually belongs to God. Our talents, our time, our home, our cell phone, our computer, our bank account, the list goes on and on. It all belongs to God. The coin in the story that Jesus was talking to the Pharisees about bore the image of Caesar and it, and it pointed to his authority. He was, he was the authority of that day and in control and, you know, he controlled the taxation and everything. But we are created by God in God's image. We're in God's image, not Caesar's image. God said, let us make man into our own image according to our likeness. The picture on the coin was an image of Caesar, yes, immediately, but of God ultimately. The coin belonged to God.
Every child of God, you and I, and you folk out there, we all have dual citizenship. He is responsible. We have to obey and financially support the human government. Yes, our government around, the world, around our country, both provincially and locally and, and federally. We need to financially support that government and pay taxes. But we need to pray for those in authority. Hard to do sometimes, eh? Hard to do sometimes because we don't agree with the government and what they're trying to do. But our prayers all together might help them along their way and make their decisions. But also if you're called on to do something that violates your high, higher loyalty to Christ, you're not supposed to do it. And we have to bear the punishment sometimes for that. The claims of God must come first. God first, others second, and ourselves last. We must maintain a good testimony to the world. I can't do that. I'm a child of God, and he doesn't want me to do it. As citizens of heaven, we are responsible to obey God. When Jesus said that we are to give God the things that are God's, he was also stressing the fact that all service and all gratitude and all glory is to be given to God. And we're to give that to him constantly and be glad that we can. Nothing must be withheld. One does not give God what is due to him by plotting to destroy like the Pharisees did. Mind you, they gave great compliments to Christ, you know, about what he did for the people and with the people. But Jesus knew what they were up to. Jesus answered their question by demonstrating that the government does have a rightful place in everyone's life. And we can be subjection to government and God at the same time. They really didn't understand, they meaning the Pharisees, really didn't understand the answer. They marveled at it, they kept quiet, and they left. Jesus had shattered the Herodians catch 22 by making light of the ultimate significance of Caesar's claim the idea like if a penny is his let him have it Jesus re response of render unto God things that are God's exposed the spiritual failure of the Herodians they only cared about the face on the coin they didn't care about the face that should be in their heart. Jesus not only diffused their trap, but he also gave the people the answer they were seeking concerning paying taxes. We all have to pay taxes. And that's okay. But what do you pay God? What do you give back to God? Moses was a friend of God and a leader of his people. And he played both those roles very, very well. And he knew that the presence of God is the most important thing that he could ever need. He knew that in order to fulfill those two roles, he had to continually seek the presence of God. And that's what we are to do as well. We are all friends of God, and we're all called to lead people. And each day, as we fulfill the roles or anything, as, anything else that we take on in this life, the first thing we do is run to him. Dear God, help me with this. We must desire his presence and seek his face in everything that we do. 
set our priorities straight, make God the center of it all, trust him always, seek his presence. Amen. Our responding hymn is Voices United 506, Take My Life and Let It Be. As we prepare our hearts for the prayers of the people, let us sing together. Lord, listen to your children praying. Voices United, number 400. I'd like to thank you for um, this opportunity of crafting prayers for the church. Thank you, Barb, and thank you for the church. The prayers of the people, and this is based on 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 1 to 10, the first letter of Paul um, speaking to the Thessalonians. Let us pray. 
O God of love and truth, we recall the letter from Paul to the Thessalonians as he wrote about the early Christians, their work of faith, a labor of love, their steadfast hope in Jesus Christ. Just like the early Christians, we too have struggles and strife. We're unsure whether to venture out of our social bubbles with all the precautions in place or to remain safely at home, confidently knowing our own needs. Bless us in our justly decisions. May we trust and wait for your guidance. Paul writes about our community, people who are loved and chosen by God. May we be safe with health and prosperity, connected, respected, and strong with neighbors and loved ones, those in medicine, education, and law. Strengthen our community with guidance as we navigate through this pandemic. Paul writes that the gospel came from the Holy Word and the power of the Holy Spirit on this World Food Sunday and this week dedicated to the eradication of poverty. May the Holy Spirit stir with us. We pray for those in need, for food and the necessity can be heard. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you and from every place. Open our hearts to your glory. Let us dream big beyond today. Open our hands to action for what we think, with your help, O oh God, we can. And now, let us say the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Thank you, Tammy. Our closing hymn this morning is I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, number 509 in Voices United.
us go forth secure in the knowledge of God's goodness and God's love, awake to encounters with the resurrected Christ as we live in God's creation by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We are fed by God and we are to feed God's people spiritually and physically. Remember, God goes before you and he's saying, come along. Beside you in your journey is Jesus Christ, your teacher, your healer, and your friend. And surrounding you with breath and light is the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and have a great week. Amen. Amen.